I'm Allie Bierman and I'm talking to you today. I'm talking with you today about beliefs. Where are they? Where do they come from? And how do they impact your life in every moment of the day? And if you do me a favor and leave a review and share this podcast, this recording with two friends, you may well change the lives of two people you know. So a belief is a thought. It's a thought that you've been thinking over and over and over again, and you thought it so many times that you actually start to think it's fact. But it's not a fact. It's just something you picked up at some point. And because you think it so often, a lifetime often for years, because you're believing it, as true, it's driving your life. It's stopping you from making changes. It's limiting what goes on. Because here is a thing. A belief causes a feeling. And the feeling causes an action. Or perhaps more often than not, your belief causes a feeling that prevents you from taking actions. If you're stuck in your life, and you know that's a topic, actually, I've been talking about since 1997. My very first newsletter was called Getting Unstuck. I was actually in the days before people were talking about getting unstuck, you know, kind of like when my book and my launch and my website for Thrive Don't Just Survive, it was like the first one. And then suddenly everybody's naming their business Thrive and the same kind of theme, Thrive Don't Just Survive. Here now to talk to you about your beliefs and your feelings and the beliefs you think are true just because you believe them for so very long. That doesn't make them true. Not at all. There's no evidence for them. And here's something that's really interesting about beliefs. Many of them, they're not yours. Especially if you're empathic inside of your awareness and so you're super sensitive to other people. You're taking on other people's beliefs and emotions. And you might be wondering why you feel a certain way. It doesn't make sense for you. And that's because they're not your feelings. I see it all the time when I'm working with people. In fact, when I'm, after I finish the energy work with somebody and I'm closing down before I close down, I make sure to stop any possible self-sabotage. And I do that by checking out the constructed beliefs. Those are the beliefs that you're learning in your lifetime. Okay. They happen. But there's also inherited beliefs. You come into the lifetime with patterns. Obviously, this is out of your awareness. And those patterns make you do certain things. They're familial patterns. They pass down from generation to generation. And it's not because somebody is discussing them or sharing them. It's because the behavior patterns are present in your world from the time you're an infant. You pick them up and you know a certain way to behave when there's a certain stimulus, but you're not doing it consciously. So here's something else. Your thoughts are creating your habits. Duh. And your habits 
are creating your life. Your habits are dictating your possibilities, your limitations, and your future. Now, another key thing to know about beliefs, you spend only 5%. If you're like most people, 5% of your day is spent living in the present moment, living in the now. Well, that means 95% of your day is spent living in the past and living in the future, both of which are fantasies because neither one exists. So it's what you're making up. And that's all happening out of your awareness in your subconscious So here's 95% of the beliefs driving your behavior happening outside of your awareness. And that, my friend, that is why, that is why your world looks the same every day. And you keep wishing and hoping and stating affirmations and all kinds of consciously trying And you know the word try means ain't going to happen to make changes. But if you don't know what beliefs are going on in your subconscious mind, it makes it pretty darn hard to change. And that's why talking about things to try and clear them, you can only draw on your conscious mind. And it's not going to happen. It's simply... Not possible. That's why energy work, the the work I do, I can't really speak for anybody else's energy work. But that's why I work not in a person's conscious awareness, but what the spirit's telling me is going on for them, their history. And I mean their complete history, even before coming into the lifetime. If you really want to get unstuck. So if you really are serious about wanting to stop the hurt, the emotional hurt, the feeling of being stuck, any physical hurt, any pain, any discomforts, it's not going to happen by talking about it. It's only going to happen by getting rid of it energetically. So when I work with somebody, we're revealing the issues, what's going on. And we find that, okay, this one is true for you now. This is an issue that's yours. This is an issue that's not yours. It might be an issue that actually belongs to one of your parents or just somebody else in your environment. Sometimes a kid suddenly starts having strange behaviors, unlike them. And there's a good chance that a new kid moved into their environment, in their school, in their playgroup. And they've taken, because they're sensitive, there's a sensitive member in every family. They take on the characteristics, the behaviors, the thoughts, not in their awareness, but they'll take on the behavior patterns of this other person. So if there's an unexplained behavior change in your child, It's important to see who is new in their environment, what's going on, because they're not going to be able to figure that out. So the thoughts are creating your habits, creating your life. And here's the thing about beliefs. I keep telling you a lot of things about beliefs. They are what makes your reality. So here's what it is what you believe or as you believe so it is whatever you believe is how your world's gonna look here's something you probably don't know nobody and nothing outside of you can make you well definitely can't make you happy and i'm just realizing I wrote a book just probably in the very early 2000s. 
And it's called what you don't know, you don't know. How your brain and mind keep you stuck. Now, what do you think it's about? <laughs> it's how your brain and mind keep you stuck. And I made a special offer because I went back, I went through it to be sure everything and it's still accurate because, yeah, I wrote it a long time ago. But I've been teaching this stuff even longer. Why? Because that's how I heal myself. That's how I healed from that first brain injury. And how I healed from the brain injury resulting from the brain surgery. I also made the audio of the book. It's a short book. It's something like 34 pages. Everybody who reads it and writes to me telling me how they change their lives. Tell me how powerful it is. That's a lot of people. And I'm pretty darn sure the link for that is let's get metaphysicalshow.com forward slash special dash offer. And it's not your usual price for an audio book with a digital book. It's under $10. And you grab it. And let me know that you got it. And you know what? Uh, you know, I used to do this all the time with my products and my programs. It's been a really long time since I've done it. But you let me know that you got the book, the special offer. And you'll be invited to a special Zoom call, a QA, and a Because like it, every time I launched a product in the past, that's what I did. I had a live call where people could ask their questions because that's how we grow. You want to change your beliefs? Ask questions. Now let's get back to beliefs and why only you can heal you. But that includes any doctor. That includes any medicine. That includes any procedure, any operation, that includes the oils and the supplements and the diet and the exercise. If you don't believe it, it can't happen. For instance, there are a lot of these studies, but the one I'm remembering right now, a study done on people who have pneumonia being treated with penicillin. Okay, a doctor might tell you, oh, penicillin's the only way to kill the pneumonia. But there were 300 people in the study. And of the 300 people in the study, 35% of them did not get well. They didn't believe the penicillin would make them well. They didn't get well. 65% did believe they'd get well, and they did. But it was because of what they believed not because of the penicillin. That's why some alternative, complementary, whatever word you want to use, healing modalities work for some people, but not for other people. Because somebody has to believe that it's going to work for them. It's also important to know if you're working with somebody who's in the alternative fields, they have to believe it because if they don't believe it, they're passing that energy on to you without speaking those exact words. But that message is going across from you to them. You're going to interfere with their healing. So when I work with somebody, I get so high. I just get filled with so much love that's passing through me that does the healing. And man, if anybody ever tells you they're a healer making you well, I run as fast as I can in the other direction because they're not making you well. They're not healing you. It's their belief system. And it's energy coming from the universe into them that's making a difference if, if they believe that's going to make a difference for them. So, 
it's a matter of looking at your world and there's something you want to do. And no matter what you tell yourself, you can't make it happen. What's that about? There's just a block in your way. I don't know how many times I worked with somebody and they said that this certain issue, this certain relationship has been hurting them and they've been working on it and working on it and they're sure that they finally cleared it. Only they didn't. So it comes up again and they'll say, but man, I did the retreats and I did the workshops and I read all these books and I have all the webinars. I was so sure I was done with it. No, they're not because they didn't believe it. And because those deep level beliefs out of their awareness were not cleared, were not addressed, they're still stuck in the same pain, in the same frustrations. I work solely with energy. I wouldn't go to anybody who doesn't. And when you're doing that, you have to be sure that the practitioner's clear. It's the first step I do, making sure the client's clear. If I'm training somebody else to do it, I make sure the practitioner is clear. So I know some really gifted people. They're not clear at all. There was one of my colleagues, every time I went to her, whatever the newest modality, whatever the newest machine was, whatever the newest philosophy was, surprise, surprise, it showed up as being present in me. That's not because it was present in me. It's because she was testing herself. Only she didn't know enough to clear it. She didn't know enough to recognize it. I had somebody else who no matter what emotional relationship thing was going on in her life, whenever she did work on me, <laughs> her issues, her relationship issues showed up in me, only it wasn't showing up in me anything except her issues. I know on occasion, I've been working on somebody and I say, wait a minute, that's my energy. That's not you. And I know how to step aside, make sure that person is clear and none of my energy is going in there to influence or impact them. And then after I've cleared that out, then I can go on assisting that person. Something I want to be sure that I'm getting across is the subject of fear. So this thing, false experiences appearing real. Eh. What I define, how I define fear and how it happens for you is you see something happen in your environment. And it triggers an experience, or more likely, a thought that you had long ago. Because remember, you're living not in the present. You're living in your past and in your future. So this trigger is, and this happens instantly. You're not even thinking about it. You react. The instant thing is reacting. What are you reacting to? You're looking at this possibility and say, oh, my goodness, I've seen this before. Whether or not it actually happened, you stored it in your belief system. By the way, notice the belief system is BS because that's what it is. It's a bunch of BS. But one of my mentors calls them bad stories. That's a good term, too. They're bad stories you're telling yourself. Anyway, when you go back in to that early experience and you pull out something not in your awareness and you say, oh, no, and it scares you. And this is a scenario that's going to happen. Only it never actually happened. Kind of like the words of Mark Twain who said, I lived a long life filled with many worries, most of which never happened. 
So somebody who is fearful is taking this picture, this image, situation they've stored in their past at some point, and they're projecting it into their future. And they're scared because they think it's going to happen. So in my mind, that's what fear is. Let me give you an example of a client I worked with a while ago. She came to me to stop smoking. She was afraid that she was going to wind up with lung cancer. And we had great results the first session, but she wasn't 100% clear. Because when I work with somebody, I don't just remove especially an addiction or a fear or a situation. But I then go on and make sure it's not going to come back. I make sure their belief system is at 100 or close to 100% that it's gone for good. And when she came back the second time, she had noticed enough movement away from the smoking She said to me, are you ready for this? She came to me to stop smoking, right? She said to me, I can't do this. I can't stop smoking. Because when I told my family I might have lung cancer, all of a sudden, they were loving toward me. And the situation had been very strange. The family was not connecting. They didn't act like they cared about her. And she was willing to take a chance on actually getting a dreaded disease so she could be with her family. When you see somebody who doesn't heal, and if you think about it, we all know somebody, no matter what happens, they're not going to heal. They have too much invested in staying sick or staying hurt. I'm going to say that again, when somebody doesn't heal, it's a choice they're making because something is feeding a need that they have. It's giving them attention they crave because they're not well. Just something to put in your awareness. Now, here's the other thing about issues, about beliefs. We focus on expands, yes. Okay, so you get to choose what you focus on. You get to choose if you're focusing on all the gifts happening in your life every moment, because they are. They really are. Or you can choose on the sad, the crummy, the yucko interpretation of the event. Now back, it's in a few weeks, it will be 26 years since I was attacked and I suffered a brain injury. And when I was in the rehab center, I, uh, by the way, when I was in the rehab center, that's when I started writing the Getting Unstuck newsletter. And I mentioned to the psychologist there, that I can see all these gifts from the injury. And, you know, read my book, Thrive, Don't You Survive. It's not like life was a picnic. My functioning was really, really poor. And it was a struggle to get through each day. And I always looked for the gifts in the situation. I mean, there are a lot of them. And what the psychologist said was the only people he ever saw heal were those who looked for and found the gifts in the situation. Now, his clientele was people with brain injuries that were severe enough to be in a rehab center. Okay. You will always bring into your world what you focus on. It will become bigger and bigger in your world. And you get to choose if it's things you want in your world 
or if you're like far too many people today where you don't want new world. Now, why would you do that? Yeah, I just spent a few days in a room with some of the most amazing people on the planet. And what I noticed was almost all of them. Yeah, it was a big Zoom room. Okay. Almost all of them were sitting there like, some of them almost had furrowed brows. Only a few people there just had a smile. Not because they were laughing, not because they were thinking funny thoughts, but they just run their head like me. They're people who live in true happiness. I frequently wake up in the morning with a smile on my face. And you know when I do my morning meditations and blessings, there's a smile on my face. Do you know when you smile? You're relaxing hundreds of muscles in your face. You want to prevent wrinkles? Smile more. Because you're going to see how good you feel when you smile. You know, right now, just smile. When you're smiling, your whole face smiles, your eyes, your cheeks, and your mouth goes up in the corners. And there's like somebody actually measured an eighth of an inch difference between a pretend smile and a real smile. Interesting, don't you think? Okay, how are you feeling now while you're smiling? My guess is you're sitting up or standing up a little taller, a little straighter. And what does that do? It allows more air to come into your lungs. And by the way, you don't know, just breathe in through your lungs. Your skin's the largest organ in your body. Breathe in through your skin, through your whole body. You will feel a difference because it's a big difference. Okay, so notice how you feel. Now, just kind of slouch. Stop smiling. Look down. Notice how you feel. For me, I feel like crying. <laughs> I don't like that feeling, so I'm not going to do that anymore. What I notice in my early career as a psychotherapist, I notice every person who was depressed sat all hunched over, looking down. Duh! No wonder they were depressed. They were telling their body, I'm depressed, and their body was giving them feedback. Heck yes, you're depressed, and we're going to keep you that way. You have a choice about how you feel in every moment, whatever you focus on expands. Everything in the world has no meaning in and of itself. Therefore, everything that happens, if it's a little bit good, you can choose to see it as a little bit bad. If it's a lot good, you can choose to interpret it, to see it as a lot Bad. It's a choice you're making. You can make a different choice. It's not easy at first, or it may not be easy at first to make a different choice because it's not your habit. However, every time you're making a choice, if you do it with awareness, you're going to make that switch pretty quickly. It's only going to take a few days, a few weeks. It just feels so much better. You know, regardless of what's going on in my life, and there's just stuff in here that you can't tell is going on because they're invisible injuries. In fact, there are a lot of people out in the world who have invisible injuries, and you have no idea how much energy they're using to compensate so that they can appear to lead a normal life like you do. Millions and millions of people. It's a choice that you make in each moment of the afternoon. I thank you so very much for coming by. And I'm just imparting my wisdom because you know what? I've been a thinker and someone who... <laughs> 
I like a lot of documentaries. I love to learn and I've been that way since I was a little kid. So a lot of people tell me I have a lot of wisdom. I think I do too. And that's how I make life changes for me and for people in my world. So come on and join our Facebook group. And the link will be in the show notes. DM me if you want to know more about how to get. And I'm just realizing I wrote a book just probably in the very early 2000s. And it's called What You Don't Know You Don't Know. How your brain and mind keep you stuck. Now, what do you think it's about? <laughs> it's how your brain and mind keep you stuck. And I made a special offer because I went back, went through it to be sure everything in it's still accurate because, yeah, I wrote it a long time ago. But I've been teaching this stuff even longer. Why? Because that's how I heal myself. That's how I healed from that first brain injury. And how I healed from the brain injury resulting from the brain surgery. I also made the audio of the book. It's a short book. It's something like 34 pages. Everybody who reads it and writes to me telling me how they changed their lives. Tell me how powerful it is. That's a lot of people. And I'm pretty darn sure the link for that is let's get metaphysicalshow.com forward slash special dash offer. And it's not your usual price for an audio book with a digital book. It's under $10. And you grab it. And let me know that you got it. And you know what? I, you know, I used to do this all the time with my products and my programs. It's been a really long time since I've done it. But you let me know that you got the book, the special offer, and you'll be invited to a special Zoom call, a QA, and a because I get every time I launched a product in the past, that's what I did. I had a live call where people could ask their questions because that's how we grow. You want to change your beliefs? Ask questions. Thank you again for joining me here today. And I will be here next time in Joy Every Moment because nothing happens outside of your body, outside of your mind. It all happens within your awareness. <laughs>